Today's stitch is the sisal stitch. It's universal and neutral. It can be feminine or masculine with a soft edge and highly textured middle resembling sisal. We have a pattern down below you can get on the blog and we'll make the stitch here today. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This stitch pattern looks great in a variety of yarns. It is worked in a flat panel only and then you stitch it together on the ends to make something in the round such as this cowl back here. You want to work with uh, your yarn of choice first and then get your needles. So I'm working with a super bulky six weight yarn and the needle size I'm using today is a US 10 and a half or six and a half millimeter with this yarn and it makes this sample. But if you want something smaller, lighter weight, I'm actually working with a four weight yarn here and the needle size is a US 6 or 4 millimeter. So on here, this is the Premier Everyday Bulky Anti-Pilling Yarn and over here we have the Chic Sheep from Red Heart. All right, let's begin. Before we dive in, you'll need to know four quick points. One is you need to have a multiple of two, so you need an even number of stitches for your project. You need to know that the middle stitches to make these column effects are multiple of two, and then we have two stitches on each end to help make this nice chained edge. Which brings me to point number two. You do not add a garter or seed stitch border or anything else here because it will cause it to bunch up on the main rows. The rows are one and a half times taller than your standard or average height rows. Which brings me to point number three. This is an easy edge to pick up stitches and add an edge of crochet border or you can just leave it alone. So add knit or crochet or leave alone. The last important point number four is you need a foundation edge. You'll want to cast on and then knit a row for foundation edge and one row of knit before binding off at the end. Let's dive into the stitch. All right, so we're going to cast on long tail with 10 stitches and I'm using the super bulky six weight yarn here, just so you can see the stitches in the US 10 and a half or six and a half millimeter. For a slower video, be sure and check out our videos down at the link below and I'll do a couple of stitches slower here. Um, go ahead and make sure you have the tail at the front and the ball at the back. Grab your yarn, split that and pull back and go up through where the thumb area is, down at the finger, down at the thumb, let it go, go up through the thumb, down at the finger, down at the thumb, let it go. Go ahead and do 10 stitches, cast on. I'm going to work this English or American style and I will give some tips on Continental because uh, we are going to be doing the thumb cast on. I think it's easier to see a quick little hack that I have. Um, it will help you tremendously in making your stitch easier for you. All right, so let's see, I've got five, ten, and we're ready to go. Now, I mentioned that the uh, foundation row is going to be knit. However, it's knit on the right side of the work. So we're going to be working on the wrong side first, and we are slipping this first stitch. So we're going to slip it purl-wise. So just slip as if to purl, and then work all the rest of these stitches purled. Okay. If you know how to um, purl and also bind off and purl and thumb cast on, then you'll be able to do this stitch easily. If you haven't thumb cast it on, that's okay. We're going to work on that today. All right, so to start this uh, first row, you're going to slip one knit wise so always slipping one knit wise on the right side and then we're going to bind off one stitch so we're going to be working with these two stitches and reducing the stitches by binding off not knitting two together so knit one two bind off so slip making that first stitch go over the second one and now we're going to increase by thumb cast on if you yarn over it's not going to set up the stitch right because the yarn is going to be on this side and we want it um, wedged in between the two. For thumb cast on, normally I would take my yarn and then put my thumb down and twist it and slip it onto my needle like that and it sets the yarn up this way. But I have an easier way to do it for this stitch and we are just going to keep it held this way. Continental numbers, just a moment. <laughs> We're going to have it around our finger here 
and then you just twist your other hand around and pick up the with the needle pick up the back of that loop from your other finger and then it's set up on your needle correctly to go in knitwise here and slip it onto your needle and that's it and you can see the yarn is set up the correct way so we'll do that again you're going to bind off one stitch so knit one knit two lift the first loop over the second okay and then thumb cast on so twist it pick it up slip it on and then you can tighten it up you can actually tighten it up when you're knitting that next stitch so bind off thumb cast on gonna twist it and then slip it okay and then the next one is if you are going to um, be working continental so uh, let's go ahead and uh, do that now before we finish this off you are going to be working in sets of two to the end and then you'll knit this very last stitch so um, we'll just let knit this last set continental so we're going to go ahead and knit this stitch knit the next one whoops bind off okay and then the thumb cast on on here you're reaching way back to the back of this stitch here so everybody holds their yarn different but essentially what you're doing is kind of like when you purl in the back of the loop you have to reach way back here and pick it up but all you have to do is just flip it and pick it up and then you can tighten it right then and it's set up correctly on your needle you don't even have to put it on this other one so now it's just ready for the last stitch and then you knit that whether you're um, knitting continental or English so knit that last stitch and that's row one flip that over and we'll go to row two alright so turn over onto the wrong side and the pattern is going to be slip one purl wise bind off one purl wise and thumb cast on and then we work to the end until the last stitch and we purl so it's very similar to row one uh, to know about row two you start getting to see the setup so once I do this slip one purl wise let's do that now you can see that this next stitch is where we had a thumb cast on. So this is a good indication that you did things uh, correctly. So um, the first stitch in your bind off should always look like that. We're going to uh, make sure that's purled. So we put our working yarn in the front, purl that stitch, and purl the next one, and bind off. And then we're going to thumb cast on here. And you can see that that very next stitch is that thumb cast on before. If you don't see that, then the row previous, uh, either you didn't lift over the stitches and bind off, or you failed to put a thumb cast on there and you'll need to go backward. So um, what I do for the easier thumb cast on here is I just flip it over. I would flip my working yarn over with my thumb like this, and then I just pick it up with my needle. Okay, and then I can even leave it loose like that and then work on that next stitch. Like go ahead and go in purl wise and then tighten up my yarn and purl. Okay, so uh, I'll do that again on the next one. Let me go ahead and uh, purl these two so I can bind off. All right, lift up and over. All right, now we're going to move our yarn over with a thumb and then scoop it up with a needle and then you can tighten it or you can tighten it when you go in to make that next purl stitch. You can tighten it there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do these and then I'll show you how to do this uh, continental. Okay, lift up and over. And then if you were to um, do it again, you do that. But if you wanna go over to continental, you just put it in this other hand here and you already really know how to do it, you're just going to go all the way to the back here and pick it up. And because you're kind of pulling back a little bit further, you can put your finger on it and then uh, you know it's not gonna fall off and then you can just tighten that up, okay? And then you just continue on. I like to do this one throwing style. So we're gonna go over here and finish it up. Whoops, yarn in front, purl, purl, bind off, just get ready, and then we're gonna do the thumb. Flip it over, scoop it up, tighten it, 
and then the very last stitch just purl and then that is your two row repeat and I'm gonna get my other sample to show you and we'll uh, finish it off together so here's some knitting that's a little bit wider for a scarf or cowl and uh, you're just going to continue working until you get your desired length and then row three you're going to be uh, knitting this row so you're just going to slip one uh, knit wise and then um, knit across so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you uh, the bind off and I'll also show you a sample of what it looks like with the uh, four weight yarn on the smaller needles because I think it's super cute. So go ahead and work these stitches, pause your video and I'll meet you back in a moment. All right, so then you're just gonna bind off purl wise and you can see how the back of this work, the wrong side actually looks really pretty. You can even work your project and uh, make your wrong side the right side. Uh, to purl bind off, you're just going to simply do what you've done before. So this is your first time. You knit these two stitches here, one and two, and lift the back loop over the front. And that's bind off one, and then you bind off the next one. Just knit that next one and continue along, binding that off, and then continue across. And then you just pull through the stitch on the last one. And I want to show you that other little piece here in just one second. So pause your video and I'll meet you right back up. Okay, we just lift the, that last one over and then you can just weave in your tails. And that's what this stitch looks like. So um, I encourage you to kind of explore. So this is what it looks like in the smaller weight yarn. We're working with a US six or four millimeter and it's got a stretchy uh, wool yarn on here, four weight. And look at the reverse on there. Isn't that cute? I think it looks adorable either in the small weight and even in the larger weight. It's really nice. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this stitch. Let us know what yarn did you use on yours and what size needles? Leave it down in the comments below. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.